from high atop the world headquarters of Southeastern Fly. This is the Southeastern Fly podcast. Thanks for joining us for this episode. Feel free to share with your friends and your fishing partners. Subscribe or follow so that you'll be the first to know when an episode drops. And if you find value in the podcast, please drop by the Southeastern Fly store. Explore the merch that makes the Southeastern Fly podcast. Also, if you need information about fishing techniques, flies, fly tying gear, et cetera, remember the fly fishing coaching sessions are open and there are a few time slots available. That's live video coaching. Best, it's best for new anglers and intermediate anglers. Coaching has already helped students become more skilled fly anglers. If you need references from past students, just let me know and I'll ship them to you via email. So who are we talking to today and what are we talking about? So our guest today from this Wisdom from the Guides episode, the first guest is a guide who grew up here in Middle Tennessee, fished here, then moved to Upper East Tennessee and fished there, currently resides in Victor, Idaho. He's been guiding full-time for five years. He is now in his eighth season working with World Cast. Please welcome Will Lizelle. It's good to see everybody here, everybody. So what's what's the weather like in, in Victor tonight? We're going to get down to single digits. It'll be quite cold. Maybe some freezing fog moving in, which will be nasty, but that's what ice scrapers are for. <laughs> 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 little information on the south i rented a car one time i had to go up north to illinois got up there spent the night in the hotel came back out the next morning no ice scraper in the car oh yeah so oh. We, <laughs> we don't really do ice scrapers down here all right so this is a, <laughs> this is a wisdom from the guides episode so it wouldn't be complete without us bringing in another guide here this guy followed the same path as Will with just a few deviations. Our second guest also grew up in Middle Tennessee, fished here, moved to Upper Tennessee, fished there, currently resides in Nashville, Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama, and Victor, Idaho. He's also been guiding with WorldCast, is now in his seventh season. Please welcome back to the podcast, Will's brother, Eric Cazell. Eric, thanks for stopping back by. Good to see you again, David. I believe this episode is going to be helpful to experienced anglers all the way to new fly anglers who want to try something different. This episode is a wisdom for the guides episode, like I said, and it's called fishing dirty. Now get your minds out of the gutter. Just the flies are dirty. Don't tell your friends you're using dirty flies because they won't tell you they're using dirty flies. It's just better left unsaid. Don't y'all think? Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So how did the topic for this episode originate? Once upon a time in a smaller river in middle Tennessee, I'm kidding. Well, actually, that's partly true. So just a few, <laughs> just a few weeks ago, uh, Eric and I got together and we brought Lila, who is Eric's girlfriend. Is she your fiance? It will be soon. Okay. No. As long as, long as, as, long as she says yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We... I don't know who would say yes to you. <laughs> <laughs> Brotherly love. Uh, anyway, me, Eric, and Lila were out on the boat. and. We started, as always, we, we run through our flies. Of course, I don't deviate too, too much. Eric was steady in the back of the boat, changing flies. And Lila was steady in the front, front of the boat, catching fish. And he threw on this mop fly. I got another friend, Pat, who uh, fishes mop flies a lot, a whole lot. And whenever Eric tur- <laughs> tied on the mop fly, I said, I've never caught anything on a mop fly other than a white one during the shad kill and you know you could tie on a cigarette during the sh- shad kill and probably catch fish eric ties this thing on i said and Ma- Ma- pat's even giving me some and i just can't catch anything on it i literally will the first <laughs> cast he throws this thing out there in some some pretty heavy r- water and just scarfs up a, a nice 16 17 inch rainbow full okay. colors everything i mean we saw the whole thing the mop what hadn't even sunk yet it was yeah. down under the water, what, maybe six inches, yeah. something like that. So That's anyway. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, right. So anyway, uh, <laughs> right after that, I got up and took Eric uh, took Eric's rod away from him and started fishing the mop line. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of luck myself, but anyway. Uh, so uh, we're going we're gonna to d- devote this episode to fishing dirty. And hey, don't take it serious if you if it if this gives you heartburn you probably shouldn't listen to the whole thing because it's all about <laughs> dirty flies the first one since we're talking about mops guys why don't we just go on and hit that like i said i don't really fish them much uh i happen to tie some the next day after we fished though eric uh mm-hmm. and and then i've still got the ones that you had given me yeah. so i will be 
I will be trying them. I'm sure. I'm sure. But uh, I think I don't remember if they were. I think they were pink or white or something like that. But I've I've tied those. You know those bright green ones that almost yeah. you're like, oh hey, maybe that's a caddis looking, or maybe it's a, a worm or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never caught anything. Never no. on one of them. Never. Yeah. And I fished them several years ago. I fished them quite a bit. And then Pat gave me some blue ones and those didn't work for me. So I don't know. I don't know if I have any insight into this whatsoever, other than the rig that I took from you, Eric, and fished it. So I was fishing kind of trying to find faster water, I think, because that is what worked for you. And then the first couple of fish I think I caught came from a little bit faster water. Uh, I did notice that they're pretty heavy. Yeah. I don't know. Will, what do you think? What do you think about mop flies and how do you fish them? Uh, where do you fish them? I think in what type of water, I mean, uh, and what's the trashiest way you fished them? Well, I love mop flies. So I just want to start with that. It's, it's <laughs> probably, it is a definitely top 10 fly for me. Oh, I love fishing them mostly in off color situations. So river's running off, you're getting, um, a spillway coming in. that's throwing some stained water in there. Um, that's when you're probably going to have your best luck with them. But saying that, I mean, fish aren't always the brightest fish and you throw something colorful, a large menu item in their face, and sometimes they're just going to eat it. Also in spawning situations. So especially out here, we have a lot of suckers Uh um, that like to spawn and it, it seems to be an amazing fly when the sucker spawn is happening. Um, you find, you know, you're going over a shallow area, you see a two foot sucker spook out of the zone and then you see seven of his friends and you're like, okay, they're spawning. A lot of times the trout will stack up right behind them, um, just like in any spawning situation and, and eat the eggs. And I've always found that mop flies resemble that egg pattern really well, um, especially in a yellow and a pink color. Okay. But, uh, and uh, I'm sure the same could be said for, for even a buffalo carp back in Tennessee, too. Yeah, right. Um, That's what I was going to say. Uh, there's a big uh, buffalo spawn here in the spring. And I have done a little bit different technique that we're going to talk about later. But uh, love it. <laughs> yeah, behind the buffalo. And, you know, there's always a rainbow. Not as many browns, but, uh, yeah, there's yeah. always a rainbow hanging around for some reason. I think they're more opportunistic. Maybe they like bacon and eggs. I don't know. So, anyway. I- Go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, lo- they love a good B&E, those rainbows. <laughs> uh, no, um, but uh, the trashiest way I fish them, Eric, Eric was with me this day. Uh, we were on our favorite section of the South Fork, and it was one of those days that pretty much everything was working, but the mop fly especially was holding true. It was an off-collar situation. Uh, we were finding them in, in fast water. Um, anywhere where there's fast water with a soft pocket next to it, something for those fish to hold in where they didn't have to spend as much energy. Um, those early season scenarios where there's less menu options, less hatches, but when they see something, they're going to snag it. And we got into a side channel where it was a little more clear. Yeah. And I was, I don't know, we caught so many fish. We were pretty much just messing wow. around at this point as, as we're prone to doing. <laughs> and uh, I just started stripping the mop fly in and swinging it around bushes and undercuts and one particular undercut had a had a nice brown probably an 18 inch or so um and it just it chased it down after the swing and smashed it we were both staring at it the <laughs> strip set got him it was it, it was a really good way to catch him and then we kept doing it the rest of the day and it, it for whatever reason worked and uh, i'd say that was probably the trashiest way of fish to mop fly so no no indicator just straight up off the um yeah i think i think at that point we'd taken the indicator off um when we fully committed to swinging them (laughs) and uh and just started attacking the banks um and all the undercut and that section especially has a lot of timber so it was it was a lot of fun a lot of opportunities yeah a lot of Um, water going by structure stuff like that exactly um just places for those and a lot of browns in that section because of that and those browns can can get really mean sometimes yeah but uh yeah the 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 colors you know my my favorite colors my favorite color is pink um my brother and i both tie them usually with tungsten beads jig heads with a little bit of sparkle flash in the mop line material and that, that seems to work best i also love a tan material same thing tan all the way through i don't like a contrast of colors with mop flies really put some flash in there for sure 
And usually with the tans, I go a little smaller than I would a pink mop fly. I think they're eating it more as a caddis or a damsel fly. Right. Shuck or nymph. And <laughs> I've tried the chartreuse. You know, there's the old saying, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. But right. I, I, I find the mop, the chartreuse mop fly to be of no use, except for <laughs> a couple times on the Henry's fork where the caddis are coming off and they work. But again, it's one of those scenarios, like you said earlier, where you could throw a cigarette butt in and they're going to eat it. Yeah, so right, right. it's uh, one of those scenarios, but it's, uh, yeah, love, love the mop five. Can't talk highly enough of it. If it's not in your box, it should be. <laughs> oh. I, I now have a whole box devoted to trash. I, uh, I I love it. I, I think love everybody it. should. Yeah, Eric, <laughs> Eric, how about you, man? I mean, yeah, I kind of just piggybacking off a lot of that, but uh, I mean, mainly I'm fishing them in in dirty water. I, I think sometimes if you use a smaller pink one, and like you know, if you're in a place where there's stocked trout and they're not as smart, I think, I mean, they look at it and they're gonna eat it. It's kind of just yeah, it's opportunistic. Yeah, I mean, tying them, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I think. Me and Will's patterns are slightly different. I like to get the the Orvis um, mop fly material because when uh-huh. you burn the end of it, it turns this iridescent UV color. Yeah. Um, the pink material does. I'm not sure about the other colors, but yeah, pretty much tan and tan and pink. Um, same thing. I use uh, UV ice dubbing. I'm not sure it really matters what brand you use on jig hooks, tungsten beads. I try and match match the pink ones up with like a hot pink pretty bright bead i think that could even look i mean they might even think that's an an egg a bead and then um, and then i would say the trashiest way i've fished them is i've i remember one time i did i had a huge pink mop and i had like a bunch of weight above it a bunch of split shots and fishing it like a full wingspan deep to the big mop and then like a medium sized mop and then a worm under that. <laughs> so, scummy, scummy so, human uh, being. So it was a, a triple, triple uh, scum, triple scum. Love it. <laughs> I'm sure they should sell you a fishing license anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Revoke it. Yeah. Revoke it. <laughs> but yeah, see, it's, it seems like the mops, yeah. I, Tan, I'm kind of the same as well. I'll, I'll fish those, but definitely tend to use pink more. Yeah, charred trees, I, I hate it. I don't, I don't think it's worth your time. Yeah, somebody's out there <laughs> losing their mind right now because that's probably all they fish and they probably whack them yeah. on that. I'm sure I, they whack. You know, I, I've, I've heard, was. I've heard in the Smokies they, they can be good because they think it's like a green, True. a big green weenie in charred. Right. 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 Absolutely. But I'm, I guess I'm just not up there in the spring and summer when those guys are out all the time. Yeah. Anymore. I don't, uh, I, I kind of got that. So I've seen, you know, like a little green worm hanging out of the, out of a tree on a, on some silk or whatever it is that they're spinning. And that's where I'm like, Oh, okay. I didn't try this little mop fly and <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing, but, but yeah, I have, I have heard in the Smokies, they really do work, but I don't know that. So don't run out and buy a bunch and go fish them in the Smokies and write a letter that say they, that I said they work and they don't. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want that hate. <laughs> no, I don't want that hate. Exactly. Don't get enough. Somebody somebody will hate this enough. So yeah. yeah so I guess probably the trashiest way I fished them was tra- fish, trashiest way I fished them was taking Eric's rod and making him row the rest of the day. So yeah. that was pretty, pretty what, th- David, that's one of my favorite things to do in the world. Yeah. So, so I'm glad we've gotten to do that you know separate but together yeah yeah we've got yeah. That, that we've got that connection for sure we got that in common <laughs> eric you you mentioned worms uh and every other thing under the sun that you had rigged on that one rig a while ago yeah but let's let's move on to worms and, and we we're we're liable to come back to mops in a minute but yeah. let's move on to worms let's go down that same format and say how do you fish them uh what's the trashy trashiest way you fish them and then what colors work, and then what water types work best. Let's start there. So how do you like to fish them? Deep, <laughs> under Deep. a bobber most of the time. There's a few scenarios where you can throw a big piece of foam and then drop it under that. I don't do it that often. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I actually stole that from Will. 
Um, <laughs> it sure did. Uh, yeah, usually under a bobber with some weight. Depends on where where you're fishing it, but you know you can either put a big rubber legs above it and then put the worm in the middle and then drop a nymph under it, or you can have the worm as your top fly, or you can go double or triple worm, throw different colors or all the same. And then yeah, type of water, dirty water. Um, there are some scenarios where there's aquatic worms. They're like not earthworms. Right. They get pushed in. I usually tie those with a uh, red vinyl D rib. Super basic fly. Um, blood there's worms. Other, yeah, blood worms. Blood worms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I where do those sure. Where do those come from? You talk about an aquatic worm. Uh, specific, not specific river, but is there a specific place that they come yes. from? And they're they're technically a small leech. Um, uh-huh. Is what they are. So any really any river that has a leech population, you're going to find some blood worms. They're not, most rivers don't have a high percentage of them. A couple of our rivers out here do. They are, uh, they're a weird little subset of worm. Yeah. Te- technically a leech though. I don't know if I've ever seen them around here uh, or, yeah. or noticed them if they are. And they're not very yeah. big. They're, they're not, tiny. Yeah, they're tiny, like maybe the, the in section of my index finger. Uh-huh. Um, they're real skinny. Yep. I've heard it's, Will could probably tell you, but I haven't been out there in out in Idaho in winter. Where there's, I've heard they're better to use in winter. Um, Absolutely, maybe early okay. spring. Um, seems to be the time to fish those. But I guess getting back to the earthworm, like the regular worms. I mean, I've been tying them all different ways now. I mean, your regular San Juan worm. I actually did a paper on the first San Juan worm that was made. And it was on the San Juan down in. New Mexico, but they act. No one actually knows who the first person who tied it was. They just mm. know that's that's where it started, right? Which is interesting. But yeah, now you got now you've got the squirmy worms. Um, you've got the uh, the flashy like kind of chenille sparkle worms. Yeah. Um, there's all different ways you can tie them now. I mean, and then I, I told you, and there's i started buying and one of our guides uh heather munn i kind of started i was like oh i'm gonna use bungee cord to tie worms just to make it more durable yeah and it worked but they're a little too stiff they didn't really right. wiggle at all and then she was like oh well, she, she was a, a hair tie and so she tied a hair tie worm which has a little bit more flexibility to it when it gets wet it actually moves a lot and it just has way more durability than like a squirmy worm does and there's certain ways to tie a squirmy worm where it's going to stay together longer but it's it's hard uh, a lot of them slice but squirmy worms are great but i think the hair tie worms are way more durable so um, are, you, are you talking about like the silicone hair ties that come in all the colors that are made out of close to the same stuff yeah squirmy yeah 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 yeah, so yeah. I've, got, I've got some black ones here i've got all kinds of colors but i got i've got a black squirmy made out of that that i really think may do some damage we'll see yeah Uh, Yeah. and then i've got you know fluorescent pink and fluorescent green and all that so yeah yeah i usually like to hang in the pink you know different colors of pink um and red and then occasionally purple and i've got some brown worms there but i haven't had much luck on those but trashiest way i mean i've thrown triple triple worm rigs before so. <laughs> little worm hatch but yeah spring springtime is probably the best time i think to fish them water's high it's getting up on the banks pushing tons of worm runoff pushing them in and then yeah if you have like agriculture and water returns from farming and, and all that they're pushing worms in that could be any time of year they're trying to uh water their field so always be a aware and carry some worms in your box at all times because you never know when you're going to use them there there's there's i I guess every river probably have has a ditches between fields and stuff and every time it rains it washes out that ditch a little more and a little more yeah so that's a to me that's a good place to to fish is right below that right below where those ditches come out and and that's pretty much any river in tennessee and yeah. you'll always find an old tire there too, because the farmers yeah. put those di- those tires in the ditch and then a big heavy rain comes, it'll push one or two of them out, you know, cause they're trying yeah. to save their field for, with that. Now there's companies out there that'll help them take care of that. But 
in the old days, it was, yeah, throw that tire down in there. And we'll, hopefully that'll save it, you know. I don't want to lose another. Old, yeah, so. The old redneck spawning bed. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're, you know you're in Tennessee, actually, anywhere. I've been in Michigan and saw, seen them. I've been out in Colorado and seen them. So, yeah, yep. they're everywhere. But Those uh, rednecks are everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they just talk, talk a little different. Uh, but they all fish uh, worms. Absolutely. <laughs> we have that in common. <laughs> How about you, Will? What what have you got on the worm front? I, I, again, another another fly that is close to my heart. Um, all flavors, all colors. Love a two-toned worm too. Um a, a brown and pink. Don't don't know why it works, but it works. I think it's just half and half. And if they uh if they're looking for one or the other, they might bite it. Yeah, um, that's that's a great one. Squirmy material as well on that. I, I really like that. Um, just some wiggle in the water, I think, helps initiate that bite. I know Eric does not like purple worms, but I do love purple worms. Really? Um, yeah, especially in an off color dark day scenario. So if you got cloud cover, I think the contrast, um, they, they can see that purple, you know, that that UV spectrum that people talk about deeper in the water column. If you're throwing that purple, it's going to show up a little better. Just something for them to see. And especially when those browns are out on the prowl, uh, I think it gets their attention. And it's something they haven't seen a lot of the times and, and they're going to eat it. But again, you want worms in the water system. Um, what Eric and I like to say when we go to our favorite section is uh, WPH, worms per hour. Um, <laughs> in, those, uh, in those irrigation ditches dumping them in you know the, the more water that's coming in the more wph and and the better the worm fishing is going to be <laughs> and uh it's a great a great way to catch fish and big fish too eric and i love one of these small rivers that, that flows through our valley and in the spring the the banks cave in a lot of the time so oh. uh, erosion is a big thing and that that dumps a ton of worms in. and and one time we were we were out there we got we it was one of our first years at Worldcast and we kind of got the short end of the stick and had to go to a river that we didn't think was going to be any good just because we didn't have the permits the other rivers were blown out so we were uh, dealt the hand that was given to us <laughs> and we pre-fished it the day before it was a nasty cold day and we could not figure out what the fish were eating like we were oh. seeing flashes down low it, it was cloudy but you could tell there was fish in there and could not figure it out and then eric threw on a worm i think he threw on actually just a giant pheasant tail and catches a fish brings it in and the fish pukes up a ball of worms onto him oh. and we were like okay that's yeah. what they're eating perfect yeah. <laughs> and and threw worms on and caught i mean caught fish all day it was unbelievable um yeah. and, and from here on out whenever that river runs out we go down with triple worm rigs and and crush fish and it's it's amazing and usually nobody's out there so especially if you're out west you know early season you don't think a river's going to be any good the river you want to go to is crazy crowded you know go to that river that's blowing out try worms especially what we like to say is soft inside corners uh -huh. again where those fish are going to be stacked up you know we'll sit on a corner for an hour and rake off a bunch of fish um, that are just stacked up in there eating worms. And every time you bring one in, it's puking up balls of worms onto you. And uh, it's a great way to do it. i tell you the interesting thing about that whole, that whole conversation to me, one of the most inter interesting things is what if you didn't go pre-fish it? What if you just said, all right, I, I don't feel like going out today. I'm just going to, you know, you may, you may, yeah. not, you yeah. may not have ever cracked that code if, or you might've you cracked it three quarters of the way through the trip and they're like, crap, yeah. I should have. You, know, you got that, absolutely you got that whole dang i wish i had a done this or that wish i would have pre-fished it worst i would have done yeah. this or that you know and that if you don't go you don't know that's right that's and exactly that's, uh i don't know My, eric and i do a lot of a lot of fishing before trips we get a day off we go fish yep. it's if you're not out there you're not going to know what's happening yep. and you know you can get all the beta in the world from anybody else but you know, if you're not the one out there collecting that information, you're not going to know exactly what's happening. Yeah, because, right. you know, as fishermen, we're notorious for lying to people about going to a spot. I don't know what's and not about. actually happening. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure what you're saying there. 
Yeah. <laughs> all, all fishermen are truth tellers, correct? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think that's pretty good information right there. I don't know how many folks I've talked to that went out west early and came back and mm -hmm. said, ah, you know, we couldn't fish anywhere because it was blown out. And, you know, we tried a little side stream, but that wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And, you know, or, yeah. or it's just, it's dirty and, you know, we just didn't catch anything. And, you know, it's just a, it's a boat ride and all that. I mean, y'all have heard all that stuff too, probably, but absolutely. If you're going early in the year, it does seem like you have a lot better chance of having, you know, large runoff, stained water, all that stuff that, that we don't like. Definitely. If you're, if you're a dry fly purist, just stay home all spring. Yeah. Right. I, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you completely agree. Maybe right. catch the occasional blue wing hatch, yeah. but that's about it. Yeah. You like, right. Right. You like to catch fish. Bring a worm box and you know, bring a worm box. Catch plenty. <laughs> bring me a few mom flies and we'll be best That's friends. Right. That's <laughs> right. Well, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on to next. And we could always come back if you think of something that might help help us uh, or listeners understand what you're doing out there. Or give them a new idea. We can always come back and circle back around and and hit up on the on the mops and worms, but I want to talk about eggs just a minute. And I've fished them several different ways. I have fished the like gummy eggs tied onto a hook. I fished those. I've, I've fished the yarn eggs and I've pinned eggs. And I think that I like the pinning the best. It just, you know, you pin it with the, with about, you know, maybe an inch or two down to the hook. Uh, if you, if you, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just look up pinning eggs on YouTube and Trust me, there, there's hours worth of stuff there to listen to. And I've got a box in my box and I didn't, I haven't pulled it out this year at all. Well, yeah, last year, I guess I didn't pull it out at all. Uh, but the year before I did a couple of times and had some pretty good luck on it and done some, you know, trips out to East Tennessee and done well and just, you know, fishing them downstream of, of spawning fish, you know, to where they're dropping eggs and it's floating down. That works pretty well. You'd be surprised. You could throw it in middle of summer sometimes, and they're just like, oh, an egg. Oh, I need that, you know. Uh, fished it behind uh, the buffalo spawn before. That seems to work pretty well. When the buffaloes get in, buffalo get in the river, I mean, you can and start spawning. You, you can get those one or two ways. You, you can fish for the buffalo with like a, for me, like a black and silver flashy clouds or works best but if you move on down a little bit and start getting into the trout then you switch over to an egg of whatever color you know you just have to figure out what color they are as close as you can get to your to your river to whatever they're letting loose there to to go down to the generally to the rainbow that's generally what it seems like i've kept caught more on eggs is they maybe they like you know like i said a while ago maybe they just like bacon and eggs i don't know but i know i do Oh, <laughs> my, we used to, whenever I would go fish with my grandparents, um, we would catch brim and, you know, all kinds of different stuff, but crappie and brim were probably pretty much, but my grandmother, my grandfather would save the eggs and we would eat caviar for breakfast with frog legs. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It tastes like chicken, um, but it's kind of like frog legs and eggs was really good anyway. And it rhymes. Uh, yeah, it does. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody needs to write a country song frog legs and eggs oh my <laughs> goodness missed opportunity yeah. <laughs> uh, so will what do, you, what do you think about what do you think about eggs so especially out here like i was saying early sucker spawn um lots of suckers in our rivers you know they're native species um people view them as a trash fish but that trash fish produces a lot of protein for our um, game fish and those fish will stack up behind them. I, I love fishing for that. Um, but like you said, I mean, even in the highest summer, you know, a fish sees that, I mean, it's pure protein floating by. Um, they, they, they're probably going to come eat it. Right now, you know, we have a lot of white fish, especially on the South Fork and the Henry's Fork um, up where we fish. I mean, I, th I think the last count was like, there's 20,000 white fish per mile wow. on the South Fork of the Snake, which is just unbelievable. And you believe it, you know, if you're sitting above them and looking at all of them every day, which is what air can I do? <laughs> and trying to get past the onslaught of white fish that want to eat everything. But, you know, they start spawning and, you know, you catch one of them, you, you pick it up and it's just spewing eggs and these tiny, tiny little eggs. Uh, so going smaller, what I like to use is, it, I mean, it's not an egg pattern. It's a hothead pheasant tail, you know, so oh, yeah. even for the people that I'm sure they have tuned out at this point, 
Um, but the people that don't love scummy flies, you know, you can disguise it with a pheasant tail behind it and put that orange bead on the front and that works as an egg. And then you can tell yourself, oh, they were eating, they were eating little blue wing nips. They sure weren't, weren't, they were eating eggs and you can lie to yourself, but that's fine. And, uh, but, but they're fantastic. You know, I, I love any color egg. I feel like works. Orange is my personal favorite. Yeah. Um, that's usually what I start out with. Um, I think that closer resembles any fish in, any fish in the system's egg. But chartreuse, like we were talking about earlier, my second choice is a chartreuse egg. I think huh. that, that fish see that. I think it's a lot of a shape, too, um, and something flashy that gets their attention, and they're going to come eat it. So we fish a lot below um, the dam, and that's where eggs reign supreme. Um, is any dam, you know, fish fish seem to love spawning around dams, and um, that's a great way to do it. The disco egg is another favorite, just a hodgepodge of different colors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got chartreuse, pink, orange, and sometimes yellow all mixed together, and that, that's a fun one to use. And then I found another one. Um, in a lovely town called Pinedale that is a few miles from Victor. And it is the scummiest egg I have ever seen in my life. It is an epoxied egg. It's orange and it looks just like a, you know, like a row sack that a spin fisherman would use. And it has a, an extension, like an articulation that has another spawning sack behind it. And they sell that in a fly shop and it makes it brings my heart great joy that <laughs> people are uh, buying those and using those. So, um, but yeah, love eggs. I think they're effective, uh, especially during spawning seasons. But again, you know, nothing else working on the river. You're scratching your head, throwing egg on. Um, you're not guaranteed to get a bite, but you know, you're giving yourself a fighting chance. Yeah, right. Yeah. How about you, Eric? What you what have you got on egg? Yeah, I mean, I'm similar to Will. I don't fish as many eggs, but I think it's mainly because I haven't been out there when the a lot of the spawns are going on. So I'm sure I will get into it uh a, a lot more. <laughs> yeah, are you going back? Um, You're going back in a in a minute, aren't you? In yeah, oh I'll, I'll be uh I'll be moving to Victor in May full May. time. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I'll be there probably forever. Yeah, so you can um, you can catch the you can catch hooray. it. Yeah. Catch the egg um, the egg hatch. But yeah, I also absolutely yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm sort of well with the the sucker sucker spawn um fishing eggs behind the spawning fish. And that's one more thing is you know, so I feel like a lot of people look down on fishing eggs because they're like, Oh, well, you're just raking the the reds and you're fishing eggs and sideswiping all these fish and it's you know, it's just not true. If you're fishing, if you're anchored up behind the red and getting all the fish that are just right behind them and yeah. munching, but, like, but, why would you not do that? Right. They're all sitting they're there eating. for a reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. It literally is a egg hatch if you look at and, it that way. You know, I hate, I, you know, and there are people that, you know, they go in and destroy reds and side swipe fish. Yeah. And that's awful, but. I think people that look down. Special place in hell for those yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think people that fish eggs kind of sometimes get unintentionally looped into that group of, oh, you just fish reds, and it's like, no, no, I don't. I I'm smart, and I fish behind it and catch all yeah. the big fish that are getting gaining a pound in weight every day. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they do. There is some protein in there. Will is right. Yeah. yeah. So this, the, the one thing, so here's a, here's an egg story. So back when I lived in Knoxville, uh, I went with my buddy, Pat, everybody knows he's got pretty much taught me, got me on the river and got me to love fly fishing. He, he, he spin fished quite a bit. He had a, like a bay boat. So he spin fished quite a bit out of it, but he was a heck, he's a heck of a mountain stream fisherman and he's a heck of a tailwater fisherman. We went up to the clinch one day and we were fishing below the weir dam and Pat's up there and he's, he was notorious for just trying stuff, just whatever. So he had found, he had his boat parked out back and he found like this little uh, canister of salmon eggs that he had just laid on the boat. And it, it stayed there most of the summer. Uh, it was somewhere on the boat most of the summer. So as we were loaded up, he, I saw, he just grabbed that thing of salmon eggs and threw it in his pocket and so we take off and we go to the clinch and he's fishing and he's got this very big brown on for, for that river. 
it's pretty pretty dang big and we were fishing right below the weir so very similar to what you were saying will is you know the spawning fish like to get there but uh i don't i don't know that it was it was still winter time so i'm pretty sure that we weren't fishing for anything spawning but uh he catches this fish <laughs> catches this fish and releases it and I don't know if y'all have been to the weird dam on the clinch or not, but it's got these round pipes underneath that the water comes up. And that fish went right back in that pipe. Whoa. And, yeah, yeah, just went straight up in it. So Whoa. anyway, I was I was standing there with him and we were talking about it. And this dude comes walking across the weir, you know, and he he'd been watching the whole thing unfold. And he says, uh, hey man, hey, what'd you catch that on? And Pat pulls out this can of real or canister of real salmon salmon eggs. <laughs> yes he goes this and the guy was just like he it just crushed him the dude was <laughs> like oh no <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you done yeah right oh no he, he had his fly rod there you know i mean he was yeah he was yeah casting them. i mean have you ever tried to cast a salmon egg with a fly rod a real it's one a- it's rough. It's almost impossible. Uh, yeah. I tried it after that. I was like, well, crap, I'm going to try this. If Pat does it, I can do it. Yeah, I couldn't, but I couldn't get it to stay, the eggs to stay on. I mean, I, you know, put 15 on one little hook and cast it out one time. They'd all be flying through the air chumming. But he, <laughs> uh, his, his, his secret was to leave them on the boat, leave them out in the sun, and it should make them really hard. Mm. It was the only way he could get them to stay on. I mean, that, that takes some real thought and, but yeah, that's I mean, thinking yeah it is it's not very pure you know as far as fly fishing goes but maybe if, you, is, put it, yeah. maybe if you put it under a dry fly or something it'd have been a little <laughs> more palatable for that guy <laughs> yeah don't worry we're fishing them under parachute out right it's right. okay <laughs> it's legal right but <laughs> anyway i haven't i haven't tried to cast the same i tried one day after that and i just couldn't do it i I uh, it just I couldn't get it to stay on, but he told me later what the secret was, but I still haven't tried it. Maybe whenever I get old and I'm ready to kick off, I'll do it and just see if I can't make one stick. Maybe I'll be a little smoother then too. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, you can try the. Uh, I forgot to mention my favorite scummy tactic for eggs is my stoplight rig uh-huh. with a uh, red egg on top, a yellow egg in the middle, and a green egg on the bottom. And that is, uh, that's about as scummy as it gets on the egg rigs. That's pretty bad. bad. So which one's, which one's catching the most one on the bottom? See, Yeah. You know, and it's that chartreuse, you know, and and again, I don't know if it's cause it's the anchor fly. Yeah. um, And it's getting down lowest, but, uh, you know, it just seems to, it seems to grab the the most fish, but, uh, and and I guess fish like to go. So they're going to grab that green egg. Yeah. Right. Um, Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the theory anyway. Isn't there, exactly. is there is there another country with a stoplight that's different color maybe we could try them Ooh. maybe england's got a different color stoplight or something awesome. yeah we need to check that out we need to, that, we need some research on yeah. that one we need to check the google on that <laughs> oh, one and see what the google i'm gonna says. google that one right okay. now <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about dirty hybrid flies <laughs> yes yes <laughs> let's start with will What's what's your your dirtiest hybrid fly? So my my favorite dirty hybrid um, goes back to our first topic, which is mop flies. Um, it also combines it with our middle topic, which was the worms, and that is a mop worm. Mop worm. I, I think it most closely closely resembles a night crawler. Mm. So the length and dense shape of a night crawler is all encompassed into a mop worm. They are, like you said with that salmon egg, they are the worst thing in the world to cast. It's like casting a wet sock. You know, if you, it's, it's just rough, especially below an indicator. But, you know, you can see that thing about seven feet under the surface. So, you know, if you enjoy sight fishing, the mop worm <laughs> is for you. The mop um, worm. The mop worm. And that is, uh, that is a closely guarded secret that is now out to the world. Oh, um, no. You're, you're welcome, everybody. Heard it here first. Exactly. <laughs> um, the best place to shop for that material is uh, gas stations, oh. Michaels, and Bed Bath and Beyond. Um, you cannot get it in your traditional uh, fly shop. They will uh, 
laugh in your face if you ask for a mop worm or the material that it takes to tie with it. It's usually yarn, but <laughs> it's great. It's a great fly. Um, you're going to have to sink that too. I mean, you want, you want heavy lead on that hook shank. You want a tungsten bead on the front because it's going to take some, some mustard to get that thing low. And that's where you want it is you want it in that low column. Like I was talking about earlier with the UV, um, you want it in that that deep dark zone where they're looking more for shape, not color. But as Eric and I saw when we fished it a few times, fish will eat it on the drop. I mean, they, they see that. Oh yeah. Nice. That protein fact meal and they're going to get it. And you know, you got slack in your line and trying to pick it up course, as quick yeah. as you can as, uh, as you see that fish eat it, but sometimes it doesn't work. Another one of my favorites, um, this goes into hybrid flies is, uh, I know people in the Southeast love their trout magnets. Um, you can stick a trout magnet no, on no. the back of a tra- of a jig hook, you know, tie a little bit of dubbing in there, and you can call that a fly. Um, <laughs> if you have no morals, such as myself, and just love oh to catch gosh. fish, that's, uh, that's a good way to do it. Um, okay. I, I got yeah. that. I'll see you all later. Yeah, yeah I'll see you later. <laughs> we'll, we'll take over from here. Uh, we fully pirated this uh podcast <laughs> no it's uh it's mean you know it's a soft plastic with a with a split tail um as i was telling david earlier i'm going ice fishing tomorrow i tie a lot of heavy jigs um with mop flies and uh and those uh trout magnets for fish underneath the ice and they are super effective you know again if you don't have morals go for it you know it's what? a lot of fun I cut one of those out of the tree the other day. Nice. Off of, that's what the, wasn't that what was on that, uh, I'll be dang, uh, somebody's fishing that down there. Yeah. Uh, that was what was on that uh, Euro rig that we cut out of the tree the other yeah. day, wasn't it? That's yeah. exactly what it was. Uh, it lovely. Had, it had the multicolored leader. Yeah. On it. Yeah. It had the, <laughs> yeah. the leader and everything on it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. That's yeah, those shit. those scummy Euro numbers. Yeah, <laughs> they'll they'll put anything on the end of their line. But so you, uh, so you you're not Euro nymph a lot, Will? I actually I actually <laughs> have Euro nymph a decent amount. I bought myself you know a Reddington hydrogen three way uh-huh. ten foot. Yeah, and uh, the, the only issue out here is you know I see people that catch a bunch of trout on it, but I just find it to be white fish bait on the rivers where I am. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and that's my only issue with it. Um, yeah. Not to say I haven't caught some nice trout on it, but it just, there's so many whitefish on some of these rivers that, you know, that thing's, those flies are perfect whitefish bait. Yeah, so. yeah I can see that happening yeah. there. And I had a guy a couple of years ago that he's, I said, you want to try Euro fishing? He said, yeah, sure. And he was in the back of the boat. So he tosses it out there, catches a couple of fun, you know, you go through the whole thing. That was a bite. No, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. That was a bite. <laughs> no, that was a bite. No, it wasn't. Yeah, that was a bite. Finally, they catch a couple of fish, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that was a bite." Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the rod's bouncing up. That's a bite. So anyway, we we left that. We we were going through some pretty quick water, and I just fished him through there. And I was like, "All right, you want to get this uh, this bobber rig out?" I think that's what we were throwing. And he's like, "No, I want to keep doing this." I said, "Well, you know, we're out of water. I just throw it out there to the side." He just threw it out of the side as we were floating down, and just he smoked them all day. Fantastic. Yeah, and and just <laughs> holding it out to the side, you know, maybe. 10 foot out from the boat you know he's more fishing behind us than he was anything because he was pretty lazy but yeah, nice. yeah he he outfished his buddy a bunch but That's then i go back go back and somebody else wanted to try it they didn't catch anything so who knows i don't know i don't know when, i don't understand all i know about that but yeah he was a happy camper when he got done i was like all you did i fished you for you know nine miles dude <laughs> you didn't do anything to hold the rod <laughs> your buddy's up here learning and you're just you're just back there being lazy just trolling yeah it's basically what we were doing with him yeah while his buddy was picking apart fish off of rocks and banks and logs and stuff but yeah he, he outfished him but that's amazing i love yeah. that yeah <laughs> how about you eric let's let's hear your dirty hybrid i want to circle back around too on something yeah. yeah so go ahead eric uh no, oh, this one it's it's a zertle. So it, Oh, I know that one. So it's a rubber yeah. legs with a rabbit strip tied into the back. So it it's you know, it's 
it's dirty because like it doesn't really look like much but i don't know there's different sizes there's a big one so you're like pretty much you're gonna put it under an indicator so you're like kind of it's kind of nimping with a streamer um, and then there's a smaller one too but i mean it kind of looks like a crayfish it kind of looks like a bait fish it's really good in in dirty water i fish them a lot in the springtime on the on the south fork um, when the water's high just a big profile um, they're not super heavy like a streamer so they're a little bit easier to to get out there if you're using a indicator you will want to fish a lot of weight above it though to get they don't sink super fast but yeah that's that's probably one of my favorite uh hybrid like dirty it's right on the border of dirty and clean that's what i was thinking it's kind of yeah. like blurring the line yeah. a little bit yeah yeah and not ton of people fish them a few guys that do and then another one is the mop stone the um, mop stone okay. oh it's yes a, it's, a ru- it's a rubber legs but instead of the end of it just being the rest of the chenille the back end of the fly is a mop fly material it um, is and the mm. uh, first person that uh my boss uh, mike dawkins gave me one and uh because he knows i love fishing dirty <laughs> flies and uh it worked <laughs> it worked uh i tied tied a couple more uh i think i ran out eventually they're not super easy to tie but they are effective they are effective i don't know if i don't think they're any better than regular rubber legs but it's it's a fun good looking fly to use <laughs> and then there's the uh the egg sucking rubber the uh oh, yeah, the, egg, yeah. the egg sucking rubber legs egg sucking um, rubber legs okay so yeah. it's so it's just a regular rubber legs there's a bright orange bead uh at the top of it so it's it's like an egg sucking leech but it's a it's a rubber legs okay <laughs> and those those also fish those in springtime fish those behind reds as well because um, okay. yeah. then that gives you the the egg fly as well as oh they'll be like oh it's an egg or the fish behind it's like oh it's a rubber leg so you it's know. like steak and eggs yeah it's uh I must be yeah. hungry well yeah, the, the, the bacon and eggs also the <laughs> yeah. worm with an egg in the middle of it one of yeah. my favorites the um, frog leg and eggs frog leg and eggs i think we're coming to something here that could be what yeah. that is is the frog legs and eggs pattern yep. oh that could be good eric you should also tell people about your scummiest worm of all time which one was that Whoa, the, hang on um now. hold on a second. the uh <laughs> the scented one. Oh. oh no yeah, those, uh, <laughs> i won't give too much info on that because there are some, uh, some guides that live and die by that thing uh, are they really i i oh, yeah, absolutely I, i'm not i have i have some i have fished them before i've never guided with them uh no. I, don't, I don't think i have any clients who would want to fish those no. things um, that's the crack in but, case of emergencies but, fly but oh, there yeah. are uh yeah. there are there is the right way to fish them where you not a fly you're just pulling them out of the pack and sticking them on a, a worm hook so they stay in place you can you can get them onto a jig hook and tie them on, which I've done with a few of them, but there, I won't give away the best. Co- there is one, there's one company that there sure is makes the best ones. And I, I don't think I can give that away. Uh, it might make some piss some people off, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's one it, company. Wait, 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 I will, wait. I'll give away the color and the scent. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, what, it's, it's a pink color, but it's shrimp scent. Say shrimp, shrimp scent. scent? It's and they're, they're, long, they're like bubblegum pink. That's it. Yeah, bubblegum <laughs> pink shrimp scent. It's about they're they're pretty big. I mean, they're it's like a soft plastic worm, pretty much. I tried I tried it with power. I tried it with regular power bait worms that were scented. It they don't work. Really? So I, I don't. I mean, I'm sure people catch fish on power bait worms, but I didn't. Uh, but yeah, there's this one company. Is it a fly fishing company that makes it? Absolutely not. Absolutely okay, not. Okay, okay. Not that's, yeah. uh, that's what I was thinking. That's like, it wow. Is, uh, <laughs> it is spin fishing. Um, that's almost if, fishing if, filthy. Yeah, if you tie... If you tie downright it, filthy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Downright <laughs> filthy. If you tie them onto a hook, you know, and maybe put some dubbing on it, you know, that might make you feel no, better. No, it wouldn't. And there's, yeah. No. There's, uh, it makes me all... feel better, David. It makes me feel better. <laughs> no. <laughs> there are... Uh, that's there like, are some people that love that thing. It, it, 
I mean, by God, it works. But it, it'll catch, <laughs> I, I would it'll catch so. a thirty-inch brown on the South yeah. Park. That's for sure. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't. Oh my gosh! I won't. Uh, I won't guide guide with that ever. It's just. It's not fly fishing. <laughs> no, that is not. I, we need to do a what is fly fishing episode. <laughs> we need to do that. What is fly fishing? That is not. I'm sorry, it's, it's just not. So it's an intervention is what that is. Yeah, that's like <laughs> talking about crack the case in case of emergency. That's like DEFCON 10. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the code. Get somebody in here with the codes. Yeah. The, the nuclear option or whatever it's called. Yeah. I think I drew the line right there. Yeah. Your, your yeah. line was in the sand. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Y'all was a little bit blurry, but that was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eric's oh, your path blurry. Uh, I, can, uh, I can I can loop back around to uh so one of the times I threw oh, I'm afraid for you to loop back around now. I want to see I'm it. Not, I'm not <laughs> sure that, that that we can stand. I yeah. So I haven't I haven't tried. It just got me thinking. I was like, well, what if I did this? I haven't tried this, but I have tried it with so you know, if you're a streamer junkie and you love throwing huge giant streamers for trout or whatever else i'm sure it's bass oh goodness eat them. but if i've done this before where you'll you know you'll throw a sex dungeoner and our your the articulated streamer of your choice and tie about foot and a half two feet um behind your streamer and tie like a big like san juan worm or yeah. any of those worms we talked about earlier behind it yeah and that's the most I mean, that's just a classic is a worm chasing a bait fish, right? It happens <laughs> all the time. Happens all <laughs> but, day, man. but but Every for day. some reason, I don't know why, but those fish, they, I think they just, they see that streamer, you know, maybe they don't want to eat the streamer and they're like, oh, a worm, a worm. And they just, they come in, they just hammer the worm. They don't give a crap about the streamer. They're just like, oh. Take the worm. It, it, it's, it's super happen. effective. Yeah, it doesn't happen every time. There's some days where it's like, this is the way we need to, to fish. Okay. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so my my reaching theory there would be that they think that the streamer just ate something and that worm is a piece of something they ate. How do you like that? Regurgitated. Yeah, regurgitation. Like it. It's the regurgitation fly. Yeah. Maybe, yep. Yep. maybe we can make a streamer and tie like worms off the side of it <laughs> Ooh, well, yeah. all, all the other fish come up and try to bite the worm off the like off the earrings fish. yeah I, yes, I, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah ear the worm earring streamer the, yeah right kelly kelly gallop is, is <laughs> yeah. chomping at the bit yeah. <laughs> it has to be articulated of course oh, it has to be or, actually it should be a game changer Ah, give, yes, give them absolutely. three. Yeah. yeah. Some articulation. Yes, yes. Mm. Yep. Articulated <laughs> game changer earring fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just lost our last listener. Yep, <laughs> they gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the uh, dang. The whole Senate thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I did draw the line right there, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. It is uh, uh I have them because I believed in it for a minute, and then I gave it some deep thought and I cried yeah. myself to sleep and uh woke up the next day and I was like, no, oh, that's not fly fishing. So <laughs> also you- also a big thing is Eric lived at my house and uh he kept his uh his <laughs> shrimp scented worms in my house in his room <laughs> and so my house started to smell of dead shrimp which oh, was a no-go oh they so they were so bad even when you have a I'm sure sunny appreciated all even, that. yeah my wife's the same but <laughs> yeah. she, she could not stand that see he crossed the line with her too didn't he absolutely yeah. just yeah. J- jumped over that line <laughs> <laughs> albeit for different reasons absolutely <laughs> <laughs> oh hey i want to go back to the what was that the mop worm the worm mop the mop worm absolutely the mop worm. all right let's go through because i don't know that i've followed enough to to know how to how to tie one and i'm sure somebody out there wants to know how do we tie the mop worm and where where do we get the materials for it so the best place i've seen is michael's so what you're looking for is 
I don't know how many people are listening enjoy uh, crocheting or knitting quilts. Well, Will, there's um, three people listening. Four count us. <laughs> I, and I hope, I hope, you know, at least 25% of those are really good knitters. Right. So uh, usually it's in the back left section of the Michaels, which uh, it's off tangent. If you go to Michaels, Michaels has amazing fly tying material, oh. uh, whether it be foam, feathers, um, just different knickknacks that you can actually tie into flies. Um, Eric and I, since we were kids, have used to beg our mother to go to Michaels. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and and she would take us and we would <laughs> we would get all the different materials to uh, tie all sorts of flies. Um, dirt cheap and you get dirt cheap. a ton yeah. of it. A ton yeah. of it. And quality, quality material yeah. too, especially foam. The, the foam from yeah, Michaels some, is amazing. Yeah, I've got some foam over there. Absolutely. So if you look up a mop material on like Orvis's website, they sell it. Try and mimic that as best as possible, but with a giant ball of yarn. Um, they make it super thick. I'd say half inch, quarter thick, however thick you want them to be. And then cutting them to the length that you desire and then tying them like any other squirmy worm or anything like that. You want super thick thread. Oh, what would you say, Eric? One, two, hundred. I'd say at least 140, probably. At least 140 denier. Pro- probably 210. Okay. I, I like yeah, that. absolutely. Okay. Super heavy thread. And again, tie in that lead, put the tungsten bead on first. Um, I've even used cone head streamer heads for it that are tungsten those seem to work well just so you can and you can put them on a bigger hook as well yeah and then burn the ends just like eric was saying with his mop flies you want to burn those ends just so it doesn't unravel because that material is not made to be cut um necessarily it's made to be again knitted into a oh a yeah right. quilt um not and not casted through the air and not the, <laughs> and then wet the and then dry <laughs> and then wet and then dry but you know they're actually they're super durable the the only issue i've seen with the longer length is foot in the mouth you know um that material getting back into the hook and hooking the hook and then you got to untie it it's all unraveled but again you can see it 10 10 feet down under the water column so if it's fouled up you can see that it's fouled up yeah Um, yeah you can watch it fall and make your mind up whether you need to bring it back in or not exactly it's a very good fly for those dirty conditions i do not throw those flies unless it is that water is stained like sweet tea in the back of the box specifically for those scenarios um, but it has caught some amazing fish i need to see a picture of one um I'm sure i will I send it, it youtube i'll send it to you right after this oh okay okay yeah, yeah. Have you did you see those bass that eric's been catching i i so yeah he's he's being rude and sending it to me while i'm working in the ski shop <laughs> and i'm daydreaming about fly fishing for bass and in, in alabama it's it's yeah. just rude but yeah I, some nice weather too down yeah. there. Yeah, I totally. Although we did get some flurries today, it did not stick though. Oh, people. there's like four inches here. Yeah, people. Yeah, we, we, got that, we got that same. That's the storm was crazy. It was like came up the Gulf and then just kind of yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. We we didn't get any accumulation, but it it never snows down here. Well, that's true. Yeah, it's not gonna snow yeah. usually down that far. Fishing. Will Will used to do that to me though when I was in uh, class here at Auburn. <laughs> the big trout. The picture. tides have turned. Stay <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, back. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If you can send me a picture of that that uh, worm mop, I'll put it out there. So uh, absolutely. The episode absolutely. that way these folks can see it. And, yeah. Definitely. Uh, I don't know what to ask you for, Eric, because uh, you have crossed the the center line. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> is Eric not allowed on podcasts? Anymore? I don't know. What, I don't know what we're gonna do with him. I, I, try, I brought the bass up so that we could probably maybe try to re, uh, repair his reputation. Yeah, there we go. Soiled. Yeah, I like that. And I could get a, uh, I could get like Drew or Craig on it too. One of the other guides down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yesterday was it was awesome. Was it? Yeah, like we, yeah, it, those look like um, some nice bass. Yeah, like we we caught a good amount of fish. We caught some. The big ones which was which was sweet so you're getting it dialed in down there now yeah More yeah than... i mean winter winter is usually you know the quality is better you don't yeah. catch as many um but i think it was good because that that uh 
cold front coming in yeah uh, today yeah i push think they were eat. just like we got to eat now <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah. we're gonna get to eat again yeah. well uh anything else y'all can think of that you wanted to add before we wrap this thing up you know first rule about uh scummy flies is don't talk about scummy flies yep unless yep. you're on a podcast um they, they're a great way to catch fish um as much as we were joking around they are highly effective flies oh, yeah. yeah highly highly effective and I, I think they have a home in anybody's fly box yeah they're yeah. they're fantastic what about you eric anything else to add there uh, I will say if you are a dry fly only, first of all, you suck and don't, <laughs> and don't listen to this podcast because yeah. you'll probably have a heart attack and die. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think the thing that I would say about it is just to stay on the technical front. And you're right. If somebody's listened to it and they're a dry fly, fly aficionado, they probably, they are, uh, yeah, they're, they're probably long gone. Cardiac <laughs> arrest or, or long gone and they're <laughs> yeah. on a message board talking about about all of us but i would say that the thing that i think is uh maybe a theme here for fishing them is is kind of stained water that was brought up quite a bit uh um, maybe a little quicker water i brought that up i think in the beginning but i mean if you can if you can get on clear water really nice clear water i don't know that you really have to have to venture over to that to the dirty side yeah uh, i mean the, you can't. the only yeah, the only thing I'd say is when Eric brought up those blood worms, I mean, I use those blood worms year round. Do you really? So if you okay. if you find a river that has blood worms in it, they are, I, I think, fish just like midges. Uh -huh. um, they're a little bigger snack than a midge is. You can really look for them. So you can tell if your river has them. Look on the gill plates of fish. Uh -huh. um, they'll be hanging off the back of the gill plates. They just look like a little long midge. They're tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and and if you see fish with those i mean toss them um it means they're eating them most likely um they're they're good protein sources so haven't thought of that that's good see good tip right at the end you hung around yeah boom <laughs> yeah lay down some will, knowledge right there yeah. i'll say one more clear water scenario would be this doesn't involve any sentence yeah stuff, I, I, I know okay all right go ahead <laughs> clear water <laughs> scenario yeah uh i would say <laughs> out west we don't really have a ton of stocking of fish most of them are most of the river systems are producing on their own they're all wild or native but i guess i mean back in the southeast you know a lot of a lot of the rivers are stocked um mm -hmm. you know if it's a fresh stocking you're there like a day or two after they're stocked before the fish settle in and start eating those regular bugs like the midges and the mayflies and stuff yeah. Yeah. i would i mean chuck a worm out there those those hatchery fish are not going to be super smart the first day or two and a worm they're going to be like, oh, a worm. Oh, yeah, a there. worm. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. tell you, though. Or a mop fly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mop a mop. Mop yeah. up the competition. Not a chartreuse, I can tell you that. Um, not a chartreuse. You know, even even out west, I mean, the fish are, are not, for the most part, stocked, but we're still fishing a lot of the same things. Yeah. You know, I mean, my box, I, I've been out there and changed my box all up, mm -hmm. and, and thankfully, through a couple of flies that i normally use here and that's what i caught the fish on yeah. so i don't yeah. think you don't have to get wild it's nice to, to tune into a hatch and all that and yeah. say that you fished the hatch fish this hatch and dialed it in and you know smoked them that day with with a certain fly but for the most part i don't think of, I, I think the fish are for the most part i think they have not intelligence i think they just have survival in instincts mm -hmm which yeah. that's different there's a couple of different things we try yeah. to assign intelligence intelligence to them but yeah. i don't think they're quite you know i don't think they have quite the iq we want to give them whenever we're talking to our buddies about how many fish and how big they were yeah i think that's more that's more for especially us. when you get skunked you know you're like oh they're so smart today yeah right yeah <laughs> Couldn't fool them. yeah they must have had class last night or something yeah you know, yeah but anyway i can i can PhDs. remember these yeah <laughs> I can I can remember one scenario where I hadn't fished a worm in I mean, this was probably like August. And I hadn't fished a worm in a while. And you know, we were sitting on this riffle, we could see this fish like super shallow, like two feet maybe. And you know, we're running through all these flies of what's coming off and like nothing's working. And then finally I'm like, all right, let's put a worm on. First cast, boom, he eats it. <laughs> like, like, why why did he eat that? It's like probably no worms yeah. coming out. There might be some, but he that fish had brought, Yeah, he'd brought he'd obviously seen a worm before. So it's like <laughs> you never know. Like 
all like different scenarios, you know, try a worm for a little bit, you know, if, it, if you don't get it eat relatively soon, take it off, but you never know. Like yeah. big, big fish love big food. So. Yeah, they sure do. do. That's, I believe that. Well, let's close this thing out, y'all. If you find value in the podcast, share this episode, uh, if you dare, <laughs> with, with your friends. <laughs> Oh, uh, drop by the Southeastern Fly store and explore the merch that fuels the Southeastern Fly podcast. Remember, we still have a few coaching session time slots available. Benefits of that can also be found at the store. Who were our guests today on this Wisdom from the Guides episode? First guest, first guest, a guy who grew up in Middle Tennessee and fished here, moved to Upper East Tennessee and fished there, currently resides in Victor, Idaho. He's been guiding full-time for five years. He's now in his eighth guiding season and he's working with World Class. Will Zell, thanks for coming out, man. I really appreciate you uh, hopping on here, and and I uh, hope you have fun ice fishing tomorrow. David, thank you so much. I uh, I plan to. I'm gonna throw some mop flies. <laughs> throw some mop flies at them. Yeah, let me know if that works. Absolutely. <laughs> Our second guest uh, followed kind of the same path. Uh, grew up in mi Middle Tennessee and fished here. Moved to Upper East, East Tennessee and fished there. Currently resides in Nashville, Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama, and come to Victor, Idaho, Idaho full time soon to guide with uh, world cast as well now he's in his seventh season eric thanks for coming back to the podcast man yeah thank you for having me i don't know what we're gonna do with you but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and i don't know about leaving a shrimp fly in a bedroom that yeah, it's just really... it's just rude it's rude to your home <laughs> it was just amazing it just it, it's uh, even when the even when they they were closed, even when they're closed it's, it's, they it's still reeks. <laughs> so bad. oh that's nasty well you just listened to wisdom from the guides episode fishing dirty on southeastern fly see you next time Dude, that was fun. a ton of fun. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully everything went well on it. I believe it did.